My dad convinced me to pay for my stepsister's college, promising to repay me. But when I needed the money for my wedding years later, he refused, all because he didn't approve of my fiance. I, 33M, have always had a tumultuous relationship with my family. No matter how hard I tried to be the mature one and make peace with everyone, things never seemed to run smoothly. It felt like no matter how much I gave, it was never enough to maintain harmony. My parents divorced when I was 10 years old. I remember not feeling angry or upset about it, just relieved. Living with both of them in the same house was nothing short of a nightmare. My parents were always arguing, yelling, and fighting over every little thing, and somehow I always got dragged into it. From a young age, I was like their personal referee, trying to mediate their endless fights. I didn't know it wasn't normal for kids to take on the role of the adult in their parents' relationship. I was overwhelmed by it all, and I would often avoid going home after school, heading to my paternal grandparents' house instead. They lived nearby, and I always felt safe and cared for there. My grandparents were the only ones who seemed to realize how unhealthy my situation was. And they tried to step in, telling my parents they needed to stop putting all their issues on my shoulders. But their advice fell on deaf ears. Because I grew up in such a chaotic environment, I never realized how abnormal it was. I thought other kids my age were dealing with the same thing, acting as a go-between for their parents. It wasn't until I saw how other families functioned that I understood my childhood was far from typical. So when my parents finally got divorced, I felt a sense of peace for the first time in my life. The constant fighting stopped, and I split my time between my mom and dad, two weeks with each parent. Surprisingly, this arrangement worked well for me. I thrived in the calmness that followed the separation. There was no more shouting, no more drama. Instead, I had quiet time with each parent, and I enjoyed their undivided attention. I finally felt like a kid again, free from the burden of being their mediator. One of the best parts was that after the divorce, my parents never badmouthed each other in front of me. I think they realized that their constant negativity had affected me, and they made a conscious effort to stop putting me in the middle. For that, I was grateful. The toxic environment I had grown up in disappeared almost overnight, and I could focus on just being a teenager. Things were going relatively well until I was 15. That's when my dad remarried a woman named Savannah. I didn't have any problems with her at first. In fact, Savannah and I had a pretty decent relationship. She never tried to act like my mom, which I appreciated, but she did her best to make me feel included in her new family. Savannah was a kind and patient woman, and I respected her for that. The transition wasn't easy, but overall, I adjusted. The real problem was her daughter, Gemma, who was seven years old when my dad and Savannah got married. To put it bluntly, she was a brat. I don't like calling kids that, but she really was. My dad, eager to keep things peaceful in his new marriage, bent over backward to accommodate Gemma's every whim. Anytime she did something to upset me, he would defend her, telling me that she was just a child who was struggling to adjust to her new living situation. He always expected me to be the bigger person, no matter what. One situation that stands out was when Gemma moved into the house permanently, while I was only there half the time. My dad insisted that I give up my room and share it with her, since I would be leaving for college soon anyway. I was furious. I didn't want to share my room with a child, especially one I barely knew. But my dad refused to listen to me. He said that it was the best solution and that I needed to get used to it. That's when Savannah stepped in. I don't know if she felt bad for me or if she didn't want to upset her daughter, but she convinced my dad to let me keep my room. She suggested that they find another solution for Gemma rather than forcing me to give up my space. It wasn't my dad who listened to me, but Savannah. It stung knowing that my own father didn't seem to care about my feelings, but his new wife did. That was the point when things really shifted for me. I no longer felt comfortable at my dad's house, and it wasn't because of Savannah or Gemma, it was because of him. He made me feel like I didn't belong in my own home, and that hurt more than anything. If it weren't for Savannah's efforts, I probably would have stopped going to my dad's house altogether. She always went out of her way to make me feel welcome. She took an interest in my life, cooked meals I liked, and made sure I felt included in family activities. Meanwhile, I kept my distance from Gemma. She was still a whiny little kid, and I had no desire to build a relationship with her. Savannah never forced the issue, but my dad kept pushing the idea that we were siblings now and should get along. 
Three years later, just before I left for college, my dad and Savannah had a child together, my half-sister, Ashley. There's a big age gap between Ashley and me, and as much as I'd like to say we're close, we're not. I've never really formed a bond with her. I didn't feel any connection to her, and she was so much younger than me that we just never had the opportunity to build a relationship. She's technically my blood, but I don't see her as a sister in the way most people would. When Ashley was born, my dad sat me down and told me that he was in a tough spot financially. He said that because of his situation, he wouldn't be able to help me with my college expenses and that I was on my own. I was completely blindsided by this news. Both of my parents had always assured me that they'd saved for my college education. And now my dad was telling me he couldn't contribute. My mom ended up stepping up and paying more than her share to help me avoid taking out too many loans, but I still had to borrow money to get through school. This whole situation permanently damaged my relationship with my dad. He had promised me support, but when the time came, he prioritized his new family over me. I didn't go to his house much after that. I kept my distance and our relationship was strained for years. Over the next seven years, we stayed in minimal contact. I graduated from college, got a job, and even lived abroad for a year. Then, when I was 25, my dad reached out to me again. After some awkward small talk, he got to the point. Apparently, Ashley had a medical emergency a few months ago, and the medical bills had taken a huge toll on their finances. I already knew about Ashley's situation from Savannah, who had kept me updated, but my dad's next revelation shocked me. He told me that Savannah had some money saved for Gemma's college fund, but he had used it all to pay for Ashley's medical bills, without Savannah's knowledge. Now he was asking me for help to cover Gemma's tuition fees and promised to repay me every cent. I didn't want to help him. After everything he had put me through, I felt like he should face the consequences of his actions. I told him as much. I told him that he had failed me as a father and that I had hoped he would do better by Gemma, but clearly he hadn't. I reminded him that this was exactly how he had left me high and dry when I was heading to college, and now he was doing the same to her. I told him that Gemma could take out loans just like I had, but he argued that she didn't have the same support I had from my biological mother. I hung up the phone, furious. Despite my anger, I knew deep down that I couldn't just leave Gemma in the lurch. She was an innocent party in all of this, and I had nothing against her. I also didn't want to deceive Savannah. So I called my dad again and told him I would help, but only on the condition that he was honest with Savannah about what he had done and that he promised to pay me back. He tried to argue that it wasn't necessary to involve Savannah, but I held firm. No honesty, no money. He hung up and I thought that was the end of it. Three days later, I got a call from Savannah. She sounded like she had been crying and she thanked me for everything I had done. I told her that I was willing to help with Gemma's tuition, but that I would give the money directly to her, not to my dad, because I didn't trust him. She agreed and we left it at that. Even Gemma called to thank me and from that point on, our relationship improved. Now, here's where things get tricky. I am currently engaged to my fiance, Mahira. She's Afghan by ethnicity, but was born and raised here. My dad, for whatever reason, has taken issue with our relationship, and he's been very vocal about it. He doesn't approve of her, and he's made sure everyone knows it. Not that I care, because I barely have a relationship with him at this point. My mother and Savannah both like Mahira, and Gemma and Mahira have become quite close, so I have the support of the people who matter. We're planning our wedding and I approached my dad to ask for the money he owed me, Gemma's tuition money. I told him I needed it soon because we were using it to help fund the wedding. My dad flat out refused. He told me he wasn't going to give me a single penny if I was going to marry that immigrant scum. I was beyond furious. I told him it didn't matter what I did with the money. It was mine and he owed it to me. Even if I used it for something trivial, it was still my money. He wasn't lending it to me. He was paying back what he owed, but he refused. He said he wouldn't fund my wedding, and that was that. At that point, I lost it. I uninvited him from my wedding and told him I would expose his lies and treachery to the entire family. I don't think he took me seriously, but I was dead set on letting everyone know the truth. So I drafted a long text message explaining everything, how he had stolen Gemma's college fund to pay for Ashley's bills, begged me for help and promised to repay me, only to turn around and refuse when I needed the money. 
I sent the message to my mom, Savannah, Gemma, my paternal grandparents, and my dad's sister. I left Ashley out of it because she's just a kid and doesn't need to know all of this. I didn't expect the bombshell that followed. A day later, my grandfather called me. We exchanged pleasantries, but he quickly got to the point. He asked me if everything I had written in the text was true and if I had indeed helped my dad with Gemma's tuition. I confirmed that I had, and I explained that my dad had told me he used the money for Ashley's medical bills. Then my grandfather dropped a bombshell of his own. When Ashley had gotten sick, my dad had called my grandfather in a panic, saying he couldn't afford the medical bills and didn't know what to do. My grandfather stepped in and paid for everything, and he expected to be repaid, though he hadn't seen a dime since. So the money from Gemma's college fund hadn't even been used for Ashley's bills. My dad had lied to me. He had taken Gemma's money for some other reason, and no one knew where it had gone. Savannah hadn't known, Gemma hadn't known, and my dad had used me as a pawn to cover for his lies. I felt sick to my stomach after that phone call. It felt like my entire family was full of scammers, liars, and cheaters. I was angry, hurt, and disgusted. My wedding was just around the corner, and I was struggling to process all of this. I called my mom, and she told me to let it go for now. She said I could deal with it later, but that I should focus on my wedding and starting my new life with Mahira. She was right. This wasn't the time to get caught up in family drama. I had a good woman by my side, and I wasn't going to let anyone ruin that. But little did I know, my grandfather wasn't done yet. My grandfather was livid. He had been holding onto a secret of his own, and he was about to drop it on the entire family. The house my dad and Savannah were living in? It wasn't actually my dad's house. It belonged to my grandfather. He had given it to my dad to live in when he married my mom, but it was always understood that the house would return to my grandfather when he passed. My dad never paid rent, but he was responsible for any upgrades or renovations, which had been plenty. My grandfather, still fuming from the latest revelations, sent a message to the family group chat, announcing that he was gifting me a house for my wedding. He said that he had done the same for my father when he got married, and he felt it was only fair to do the same for me. His message was a thinly veiled dig at my dad, and I loved every bit of it. But then came the real shocker. The house my grandfather was gifting me was the one my dad was currently living in. My dad was furious. He had no idea this was coming, and now the house he had been living in for years would belong to me. I don't live in the same town as my dad, and I don't plan on moving back anytime soon. The house is a valuable asset, but I won't be living in it for a long time, if ever. But now, my dad would be at my mercy. I could choose to evict him, charge him rent, or even sell the house. The power dynamic had shifted entirely, and my dad knew it. I'm sure this is going to cause even more drama, but I don't care. I'll happily accept my grandfather's gift. Whatever his reasons, I'll honor his decision. I'll deal with the family's outrage after my wedding. Update one, things have gotten even worse. My wedding is just a week away and the family's in chaos. Despite my efforts to stay out of it, I've been dragged into the mess. After my grandfather's announcement about gifting me the house, my father was livid. He called me multiple times, but I refused to answer. Then he sent me a long, angry text, accusing me of turning my back on the family and saying he was ashamed of the person I'd become. I didn't respond and blocked his number. When that didn't work, he started emailing me. Every morning, I'd wake up to five or six desperate emails from him begging me to reconsider. It was exhausting, and, and I was fed up. My father is still technically invited to the wedding, but I'm seriously considering uninviting him. At this point, I don't care what anyone thinks. I can't stand the sight of him, and honestly, I need space from Savannah too. I'm worried that my dad is going to pull some kind of stunt at the wedding and cause more drama. I called my grandfather and told him he needed to handle the situation until after my honeymoon. I told him I didn't care what he did, but I needed to focus on my wedding and I couldn't afford to deal with my father's nonsense right now. My grandfather assured me that he'd keep my dad in line and make sure nothing interfered with my big day. Update two, I'm officially married. Mahir and I returned from our honeymoon a few days ago, and it was amazing. We had the time of our lives, and thankfully no one from the family bothered us because I had most of them blocked. I thought the drama might be over by the time we got back, but boy, was I wrong. Gemma called me yesterday asking to meet her and Savannah. I was hesitant at first. I didn't want to see Savannah after everything that had happened, but Gemma convinced me. She was innocent in all of this, and I didn't want to punish her. 
The meeting was tense at first, especially with Savannah. She congratulated me on the wedding, and I explained why I had disinvited her. I told her it wasn't just because of my father, but because I suspected she might have been involved in the whole scheme with the money. At that, Savannah broke down. She started sobbing and said she had no idea my father had taken money from my grandfather. Then she told me everything. When Ashley got sick, my father told Savannah that he had borrowed money from my grandfather to cover the medical bills and that he would pay it back. Savannah believed him. For years, she thought everything was fine. Then when she found out that Gemma's college fund was gone, she confronted him. He lied again, telling her that my grandfather had pressured him into paying the money back and that I had offered to help. Savannah was embarrassed, but she was grateful that I had stepped in to support Gemma. But everything fell apart when my grandfather announced he was giving me the house. That's when Savannah found out the truth. My father had never repaid my grandfather. Instead, he had used the money to cover up an affair. His mistress had been threatening to expose him, and he had given her the money to keep her quiet. Savannah was devastated. She moved out of the house and filed for divorce. My father has been begging her to take him back, but Savannah said she'll never forgive him for cheating. I was in shock. I felt terrible for Savannah and apologized for disinviting her from the wedding. She didn't deserve any of this. She was the biggest victim in all of this, and I regretted not supporting her sooner. My father is not only a liar and a fraud, but also a cheater. I want nothing to do with him. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our stories and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us continue bringing you captivating tales and new content every week. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. We appreciate every one of you for being a part of our storytelling journey.